What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Alex. This is Loki Tech. And today, we, the average internet user, are taking the L. Taking the big fat L. And I'll tell you why. Because net neutrality was repealed. An Obama era regulation that required internet service providers like Verizon, Comcast, AT&T to treat all internet content regardless of where they were coming from, whether that be Facebook, Google, YouTube, Netflix, they had to treat them all equal and they all had to give them the same speeds and the same treatment. They couldn't, they couldn't throttle, meaning slow down any one of them. Now I'm going to explain this in the most simplistic version for the average user because this doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. We're going to look at this beautiful little diagram. The internet service provider being a Comcast, a Google, I mean, sorry, a Comcast, a Verizon, an AT&T, a Time Warner, um, that would be the toll booth. And this toll booth is what connects Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, Xbox Live, all your favorite websites, the hub, <laughs> to us, the user. You know, this is the consumer, the user. It doesn't really matter, but, you know, the, 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 to, the, uh, to the small businesses, to the large businesses, they connect, they connect it to the normal household. The toll booth is the internet service provider. And the lanes, being Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, Xbox Live, and the hub, using those just as examples, all can go through this toll booth with equal speed with net neutrality. Actually, this toll booth is required to let all of these people go through without prejudice, without bias, um, without any malice, or with any ill intent, and they have to let them go through at the same speed. Treat it equal. That's what it comes down to. Treating everything on the internet um, as part of the internet and basically classifying the internet as a utility. This is the Federal Communications Commission, FCC. That was a law that was passed in 2015. Now, now, with it repealed, this toll manager, being Verizon or AT&T or Comcast, can come out and go to Netflix and say, hey, you're carrying these huge trucks with a lot of rocks because, you know, high bandwidth. This is just an analogy, but it's a high bandwidth service because it has HD video streaming. Well, Netflix, because you do this, uh, we're, we're going to put a huge fee on you going through our toll booth and reaching our customers. Or they could just say we're going to slow you down because, you know, we, we don't want you to throt, like, you know, use our toll booth in that same manner as, as, a, uh, you know, as a simple Facebook, which doesn't actually have video. Well, Facebook now does a video, but get you my point here. As a Twitter, for example, right? So they can charge Netflix, and Netflix, of course, is going to pay it because they want to reach all of us, the consumers, with quality HD streaming service. Otherwise, we might not use their service if we can't access it or it's really slow or it's not, you know, not HD. And so then they're just going to up the price for the consumer. So we get screwed on that. They might pay the toll manager this, but then it's going to be passed on to all of us, the consumer. Here's another scenario. We're the consumer here. And just like they do with television channels, you have the sports package, right? Or you have just the news you can buy for like the Comcast, you know, t television packages. Um, or you can buy the package with HBO, and they all are different prices, different price points. Like the HBO package is much more than, let's just say, the news package with like the basic couple channels. So now, we might be facing as consumers a new era in internet where we have a social media package where we can access all the social medias but not much else. Or an entertainment package where we, are, we, are, we can access YouTube and Netflix and all these other, they can block us as the consumer from stuff. They have the right to do this as the internet service provider, which I'm going to go into two things here, is already an extremely monopolized market because internet service providers, I can only name a handful in all of the United States that I know of actively. In where we live, um, there's only two that I know of that can actually service us, which leaves you with almost no options. Um, and most Americans feel this way. Comcast had to rebrand into Xfinity because they treated their customers so poorly, because they treated them so poorly as a monopoly. And, and all of these companies are big conglomerates. There's a huge barrier to entry to become an internet service provider because you have to set up an incredible infrastructure that costs a lot, interwoven infrastructure connecting all kinds of houses to major um, network centers. So long story short, I think we should have regulation. I'm not a big government regulation guy, but I think we need to have regulation on something as valuable and as precious as the internet, which at this point has become a household utility for almost everyone, from basic communication um, to just basic standards of living. People work from home on the internet. Uh, the internet is a staple in almost every household. My light switches work on, on internet. Um, it's, just, it's just so vital to how we live as humans in the 21st century. 
And by allowing internet service providers to have this power to wield this magic wand to charge either these big companies and these big internet, you know, internet websites, charging them or charging us for different things, I think is bad. And I think it, it actually stifles the creativity and the development and the entrepreneurial spirit that comes with the internet, which is this giant open blank canvas where if I create a website, it's gonna get to you just the same as a giant Facebook you know, as, as Facebook, who has millions and millions of dollars where they could potentially pay the internet service provider to get to all of, to all of us. So I think the biggest problem with repealing net neutrality is not necessarily what is gonna to happen tomorrow, but it's what could happen in the future. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a story real fast. Cable services, when you bought a cable into your house, cause you know, television used to be wireless, it still is wireless actually, if you get an antenna, believe it or not, but, um, when you bought cable, it would come without commercials. The reason you would pay to watch television back in the day, like when our grand grandparents were alive, is to bypass all the commercials and all the nonsense. And then slowly, you pay for cable and you still get commercials. And then you just pay for cable and you get commercials just as much, if not more. And now, um, it's happened where they fractured cable into all these different packages. You don't, you don't get all of the channels unless you pay an exorbitant amount of money and you still get ridden with commercials every six minutes or something ridiculous. And the problem is when you leave these things, such as a network, which is supposed to just interconnect everybody, and you allow an internet service provider to then regulate that network to however they see fit, um, especially in the sense when it's a monopoly. The free market works almost in everything. Here it's not at play. I don't have 10 options to go get internet. I don't. I have two if I'm lucky. You know what I mean? Some areas have one, some have three. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that these are huge companies that have laid out infrastructure that is untouchable. Um, it's hard to do this. There's no startup internet service providers. Google was able to do Google Fiber, but that was to actually compete and help you know, move forward and progress these internet service providers that are old and terrible. So long story short, I don't know if we should be trusting internet service providers with the regulation of the content we consume as users. I just don't think that's smart. And I think that could backfire. And having a regulation out there that states that they have to treat all content on the internet equally, it really doesn't hurt anybody. If anything, it helps, right? Whereas the other way around, we could get directly hurt from this. So I'd say, and I'm, a, I'm not a man of heavy regulation, but I'd say, we keep this thing regulated and keep net neutrality in place. I know it's too late for that. Hopefully, hopefully it comes back. But uh, and we don't allow internet service providers to deck us even more than they already do with their ridiculous costs and their terrible customer service. With that being said, leave a comment below if you agree with me or what you think about this. Is net neutrality something you think is necessary? Because I've heard both sides of the argument. Uh, I do think it is something necessary in the 21st century as the internet becomes more and more of a utility in everyday household applications. Peace. Thanks for watching.